from first pitch to final product. This episode is all about how you design jerseys for some of the grand old clubs of football. This is a wonderful piece of design. Yep. Taking your home and your fans away with you, players have always got the fans with you. I to respect the, the, the club and the conditions mm. of the club mm. throughout all three. Hello everyone and welcome back to Behind the Chevrons. I'm back, Phil, as your host for today. In this episode, where we take a look at the St. Etienne kits for the 2022-23 season. Of course, as usual with Behind the Chevrons, I've got a guest as well. But before I introduce him, make sure you subscribe to the Hummel channel and also leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. But I'll introduce my guest now, which is James, designer at Hummel. James, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Now, I've already mentioned your job as a designer. Can you just tell us a little bit more about maybe how you came to Hummel, how long you've been with Hummel, and just what the role of a designer is at somewhere like Hummel? Yeah, I've been at Hummel since uh, February 21. Okay. And then I came here from, I've been around a bit, but I was living out in Australia, so I travelled during a pandemic to come to home. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was wow. a bit of a difference from a nice summer to a colder winter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, job at Hummel, covering things through pro club, retail, lots of different areas. So you're here at Hummel, but what was your kind of background getting into design? Was that something from a young age that you kind of knew, I want to do kits? Or was that actually something a lot later in life? I actually always wanted to be a designer. I used to yeah. actually draw little football kits and stuff on the oh, table nice. home in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah. every, every person. Wants. So yeah, doing actual football kits and jerseys is uh, is amazing but um, yeah. when I got a bit older it was like I was more interested in getting interested in um, performance design mm. so rather than um, you know traditional fashion I started getting into like you know fabrics and uh, function how body moves and I thought this is really cool and interesting yes, yes. so when I was studying that was where I wanted to focus and then from that I've just always worked in sport so yeah. I've worked for a lot of brands and then yeah just, I just always get excited about that type of thing amazing so yeah Obviously, we're here to talk about St. Etienne. It's a really interesting time at the time of filming. Uh, it's the first year with Hummel. I'd be really interested from your role as a designer. What was your involvement like taking on uh, St. Etienne for the first time? Did you get involved from the early stages or do you just kind of receive stuff later on in the process? I was involved from sort of day one. Before I moved to Hummel, I had a contract, obviously, I was employed and I was yep. in yep. the middle of moving. So I started sort of there, okay. getting my um, ideas. And then we had the marketing guys. They sort of forwarded on the, the, the stories of what they wanted to do for the, for the yep. pit. So the whole nice. story of nature and the, the area of St. Etienne. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the third kit with the mining history comes in. That yeah. was all from um, the, the beginning point. Yeah. So even before the kind of contract signed, sealed and delivered, you yeah. were still involved in a sense with those early pitches. That's really fascinating. Obviously with St. Etienne, given the club's history and pedigree, what are some of those kind of unique challenges when you're taking on a club who have got that history, got that success, mm. and maybe not had a prior relationship with, with Hummel? So I follow a process called um, Discover, Idea, and Go. So mm -hmm. it's just, um, and I took it from other brands that I'd worked in before, mm -hmm. and the idea of discovering, I mean, you can go on online and, and look through like social media and stuff and get a bit of an idea of the, of the club. Yep. But the discovering part I find better is being in the town. Mm. So during, well, when we were doing this, it was obviously a pandemic, so I yeah. couldn't get there, but I'd been to St. Etienne before. Right. So I'd, um, they were one of the hosts of Euro 16, so ah, I'd been there. Yeah. So yeah. I'd had a prior experience of the, of the town themselves, and I'd been in the stadium and watched yeah. the game. The idea of discovering, I mean, you can... It's just getting under the skin of uh, the fans and what they mm. want. So it's not just visiting the club, watching a game, mm. going to club shop. It could be uh, if you're in like Spain, the tapas and yep. Um, yep. going out for food, um, um, club fan bars and stuff right, like that. You get right. lots of memorabilia and ideas, and you sort of get yeah. an, they hear the songs that they sing, yeah. and you get a bit of an idea of the the, yeah. the club and the. Every club's big to the area as well. Mm. And then mm. St. Etienne's obviously special to the people of St. Etienne. Yeah. Well, as we do at Behind the Chevrons, of course, we've got some shirts, these shirts <laughs> to talk about, to continue these stories. So let's get them on the table now. So here we go, the 2022-23 St. Etienne home shirt. James, firstly, just your first kind of things you want to point out with the design or anything from the story of, of creating it? The main thing on this, obviously, is a, the a topography graphic. Yes. That's the main thing that you do see. We have a new badge for St. Etienne for this season. Yep. Yeah, then we've got the C.S. Lee Chaudron. That's not the best pronunciation. <laughs> That's okay, yeah. But uh, it's, the, it's the stadium. They have this. It's yeah. like when the players walk out into, into the stadium. Ah, okay. This is uh, above the entrance to walk right, out. So right. it's almost that part of it. And it's also bringing the fans with them as well. Yeah. And then yeah. um, we obviously have the St. Etienne scarf that they're obviously wearing in the right, back. Right, right. And coming back to the topography, that is certainly one of the things you, you first realised about the shirt. How did that come about from a design process? What were some of the kind of 
first stages to get this on the kit? So, yeah, the first stage, like we wanted to talk about sort of the nature of the area and right. um, it's recycled fabrics, this type of thing. Nice. The original idea was focusing on the, the Law River. So uh, okay. I created a, like an abstract version of what the Law River would, it, and it was yep. a similar yep. type of, of idea. It's all about the, the nature, and the Law River runs straight through St. Etienne, so it's a uh, okay. big part of the area. Yeah. And then that's where it was sort of the conversation of, you know, where is our, where's our stadium in comparison to this? Yeah. And it's more like, well, it's an abstract version. It's <laughs> not necessarily re, re, you know, really accurate. Yeah. And then that's where the, so the idea came of, okay, let's try to be a little bit more accurate then, and um, I try to draw the area and position right. the, the stadium in the correct place. It's a little bit like where near where your heart is, I guess. It so, is, um, yeah, yeah, nice. So nice. it was slightly off center, slightly under the mm. badge, slightly mm. above the sponsor. This can, you know, it's a, it's a difficult thing to achieve because you're having yeah. to grade your scale, your different sizes yeah. from a position that's not central. Yeah. But when we spoke to the supplier, they were like, "Yep, yeah, we can do this." We, oh, so nice. uh, we we achieved uh, one yeah. of our wishes. Then it was well, good. That, yeah, that's really interesting because again, just. From the outside in, you kind of just assume it's quite easy, you know, just a case of nudging it along. Yeah. But actually, it, yeah, that's quite tricky, right, to, to get that in a specific area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got your extra small, you've got your, all your different sizes. And right, when they go into right. production, they've got to make sure it's in the exact right position each time. So, yeah, um, yeah the supplier did a really good job with managing that, that, that yeah. little detail. And just thinking briefly about the kind of back and forth with clubs as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, without having to give a specific number, how many times is it kind of, you know, how many revisions will you go through typically? With this one, it wasn't actually, it was mainly the graphic and sorting sure. that out. And then they changed their branding. Yes. So we... we and we, and what point did that happen in, in the process that for was, you? That was quite, it was quite late in the process where we right. had the, the one, they, they involved the fans as well. And they wanted yes. to, you know, they had different interpretations. So we had an idea of what it could be. Yeah. But it was a little bit later on in the, the process where mm. they were like, this is the one. Yeah. Um, in terms of conversation, we were always in conversation with a team in France mm -hmm. and um, and obviously Saint Etienne themselves. Mm. So the green, the 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 neckline, a lot yep. of things sort of stayed. The idea of moving to full green, yeah. this was um, new. So. I was going to say, I, I noticed at the time uh, people and fans wondering if that, what the decision was there. Was that just kind of a random choice? What led to that decision? I'd be curious to know. Well, yeah, the classic is a green jersey, white shorts, green socks. Uh -huh. And the away is usually a, a flip out of that. Yeah. When you move into a club, and if you're the new brand and you know, and they've been with another brand before who they had a bit of a history with, as a full kit, it sort of changes the visual and the look of it. Mm, so mm. going to a, a full green sort of gave you this like nice, new, fresh, mm -hmm. fresh feeling. Mm -hmm. And it made the away like pure, pure mm. white. And then, you, you know, the elements stood out more. Yeah. Well, on that subject, let's go into the away and talk about that more. And here is that lovely away shirt. Just before we get onto the details, James, what is it like when you come in and you sign off this partnership? What are some of the conversations you're having about how to approach this kind of multi-year partnership with the new club? You don't want to come in and be too too different. You want to obviously be true to the tradition of the club. Yep. Um, thinking about you know where you can go for season two, season three, etc. Mm. But also you want to make your own stamp. Yep. So Hummel want to have their own stamp and put their own stamp onto Saint Etienne. So you know moving to like a full green, full white. Yep. It's a very easy, simple way to be true to the club, mm -hmm. true to their history, but mm -hmm. make a point of difference. It's mm. a humble point of difference. In a previous episode, we were talking about Coventry and their shared uh, story across the kits. And it's really cool with the St. Etienne kits here, seeing again the topography coming through. And interesting central element as well. What's, what's this? Is this just just a nice design element, I assume. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, so it's basically to try and balance the graphic out. So it's okay. more like bringing a stripe element into into the graphic. Um, they've had stripes in the past, and not yeah. always just been green. So yeah, yeah. it's sort of bringing that little bit of history into nice. the club, and in a new nice. a new Hummel way. Yeah, uh, and yeah, the centralised idea. It started off to to the right, so it was a. Um, Oh yeah, you know, through the crest. Yeah, through the crest. Yeah, like that. Yep. Way. Yep. Um, and then we centralised it because we thought we balanced it out a mm. bit better. And um, yes, the same daddy in the club preferred it that way too. So yeah, no, that's really good. I noticed a slightly different image on the inside neck there. Yeah, it's again, it's, it's the idea of taking the fans. So when they're wearing this kit, predominantly it's when they're away. Yeah. So yep. taking your home and your fans away with you. Um, yeah. So that's the idea there. So the players have always got the fans with them. And we're finishing with what is my personal favourite of the collection: the third shirt. This is a wonderful piece of design. What's the story behind this one, James? So the story um, behind this goes way back to sort of the pitch, and it's about like um, respecting the the area where the club was founded from. Not mm -hmm. not just the club, but like the, the area of Saint Etienne. Mm. So the sort of um, mining industry that was was there, more of a modern city now. They've gone right. to you know, fabrics, arts, and but um, the history of the, the the area and the club. 
is around the mines and the mining. So that's what this is about. So it's yeah. it's got that, you know, it's, it's black and dark because yeah. it's a mine. Yeah. The graphic itself is inspired by the, the mine itself. So the mm. you know, these uh, metal mining yeah. machinery. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. mine. But it's inspired by that. So right. it's not an exact take on it. It's like a you know abstract art version yeah. of, yeah. but that's sort of where it comes from. And then... Um, Obviously, we've got the, the the new logo again. Yes. And all elements on this are um, got this metallic sort of feel yeah, as well. Yeah. So it sort of feels a bit more industrial. And what's this image here? It's a mining lamp. So um, okay. It, so these are obviously what they used to carry down into back in the yeah. day, these oil lamps. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what the, the club actually wow. give them to sort of the players as well. Like, uh, Do they? Yeah, with these, <laughs> um, with these hammers on it. So it's wow. um, actually one of the, the club's uh, mining lamps I took inspiration oh, from. Excellent. And then, um, yeah, we put that in the back next. So the, the players have always got this sort of... And the fans as well. I've always got this uh, sort of mining lamp and, yeah. and, and history to it. Yeah. Now, it is a really, really strong look. And I love, like we mentioned about the kind of, like the monochrome, like they're just all in silver, uh, the details. Is that something which you have to kind of really fight for to get all these recolored elements, things like the sponsors, etc.? The thing with um, the sponsors, you always have to involve them because be, they have their own branding as well. Yep. Um, so, yeah, for sure. When we, we do things, then we always can contact with the, the sponsors. Mm -hmm. Sponsors can change. I think at the beginning of the process, it was someone else. And, right, okay. Um, Smart Good Things came on board. And then, yeah, with the, in terms of the, the prints and getting this metallic, we're going mm. to have to work with suppliers and make sure yeah. that we get the prints correct. And then there's a different technique for the badge. Yeah. So you've got to sort of colour match these as well. Yeah. So, um and like I said, this was a lot later in the process when yeah. we got this. So again, supplies did a really good job, like um, yeah. being able to get this, matching everything. So it's, um, yeah. you know, they're not all different colours. When you mentioned about the, um, the the different materials and the finish mm -hmm. and stuff, uh, at what point in the process are you looking at that? Is it kind of after you've designed the shirt or is it a lot more early on where you're thinking about not just the, the look of it, but the actual materials that are going to be used? Right from the beginning, I'm um, like, Right at the pitch, we were looking at metallics because mm. it's the idea of a, a mine and then the metal machinery, everything that's there. Yep. So we liked the idea of this metallic type of look. You know, colours change. So like, um, you know, you, you always give clubs a couple of options. You don't just go in with one. So yep. we had like a green. So it was like a Saint Etienne green metallic mm. that we tried. And then we, we sort of not just Hummel, but the club and, and uh, team in France all sort of went towards this silver metallic sort of. They all went this yeah. way and was like, this looks the best. Yeah. So yes, but then the, the technique was from day one. was right. one of the parts of it, yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. And just quickly on kind of third shirts, typically certainly from our perspective, they seem to be some of the more interesting or out there. Is that something which you, you notice as well as a designer? Do you feel that freedom or is it actually not necessarily the case? Is it just just so happens that third kits tend to be a bit more out no, there? I think, I think it depends on um, depends on the club. With sure. this one, we want, with St. Etienne, we wanted to be traditional, well, not traditional, but we wanted to respect the, the, the club and the traditions mm. of the club mm. throughout all three. So that's where sort yeah. of the mining sort of inspirations taking part of the mm. heritage. And then we've got the club heritage, the green and white running yeah. through. But yeah, sometimes on a third kit, it's a little bit easier to go a little bit left field because you can, because mm. um, the tradition is going to obviously be with the home. Yeah. So you can move to that. But what we did is we actually did it with the goalkeeper this time. So right. we thought I will take the topography story through into the goalkeeper. Yeah. and we'll, um, So it's like a blue goalkeeper. Uh -huh. And then it has the yellow, it has um, the green, white, yellow. It's got the colors yeah. in, but into the topography. It's and great. we brought that there. So then the goalkeeper Goalkeeper's the cool one. So, yeah. yeah. I wonder, just curious, was that ever a consideration for Home Away or Thirds, that way that the photography was used? Not for this one. Sure. Um, that, that type of thinking, yeah. We, yeah, were, yeah. But, uh, we were like looking into it. We yeah. had this sort of set out and it was very good. Yep. Uh, and then we thought, you know, let's be like, yeah. quite cool and funky with the goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, it. yeah, it was cool. And James, as we begin to wrap up, is there anything else about the collection uh, which you'd like to highlight? Um, yeah, we, what we did is um, to tell the whole story of St. Etienne in the area, and we had the topography story. Yep. We continued that through a couple, so obviously the home and away, and we put it on the goalkeeper, yep. but also the warm-up tee. Um, so uh, yeah. just before a game, home, away, whatever game they're playing, um, they've got this story continued that they're representing nice. the area, and they nice. warm up before the game in the warm-up tee as well. So, um, yeah, we, we pulled it through the whole history of St. Etienne through every story. Yeah, that's a really nice touch. And I'd love to hear more about this Discover a method that you talked about. Have you got any other examples of kind of things from maybe recent kits uh, that have showcased what that process looks like? Yeah, well, actually the one I'm wearing. So um, with Christiania, I actually went to Corbin. I'd never been, so I, I went, yeah. went with my wife and then we 
were there and I thought, well, go to Christiania and I'll have a, a look around and get a bit of a feel. Yeah. That's the idea of discovering. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and then when I was there, it's like, um, yeah, very alternative and very different, something yep. I'd not experienced before. Yep. But while I was there, there was um, like a wooden troll that's made out of reclaimed wood. Yeah, and yeah. there's an area, it's a bit like a, a Bauhaus or a yep. general store where it's you can go there and you can take elements and you can go and put them in your house, build your house or yeah. whatever. And it's that sort of culture. So I had this idea of trying to bring something reclaimed into their Ah, into interesting. Their jersey. So interesting. They, the badge is actually out of reclaimed uh, TPU. So is that they basically really? take bits huh. of that's old TPU and they put it in some old and it's a, yeah. like a reclaimed badge. No, that's so funny because I'd not known that and seeing it, like certainly it was one of the most interesting quest applications and stars I'd seen across any kit. So to know that story is really cool, really cool to hear that. It's one thing to, to have an idea, but it's one thing to actually execute it. Mm. Again, how do you go from that idea, that moment where you see something, you're inspired by it, to actually putting it into a kit that's going to be worn on the pitch? I mean, there's lots of reclaimed things. You can reclaim mm-hmm. fabrics, you mm-hmm. can recycle fabrics, you can you can do that. Um, the main thing for a club is obviously, the and for the fans, is the badge. Yep. So it was like, is there a way of doing it? So it was contacting suppliers, having mm. like a different techniques. You know, you can do a recycled badge, but mm-hmm. I liked the idea of the story that you can see. It, see it through yeah. how it reclaim. Yeah, so yeah. spoke to the supplier bases and we got some sort of ideas and then I, I made some versions. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, you get samples in and then we started to work into how do we get this to mm. look like it ended up. Yeah, no, it looks great. It's, uh, as I say, one of the standout pieces of design I'd say on a kit uh, this season. And just as we finish, James, obviously you can't reveal all the secrets, but i just love to hear kind of what are some of the things we can look forward to, maybe with St. Etienne or just in general from what you're doing. We always try to be bold and try to push mm. the boundaries a little bit. So yeah, what you can expect is um, um, that's what we'll be trying to do. So um, nice. you know, different teams and like, what can we do? Can we like push it here? But you know, we yeah. always have to be true to the club. Yeah. Um, but you always want to bring out something new each season, yeah. something for them to get excited about as yeah, well. So absolutely. that's what I think you can expect. So just trying to, you know, make our humble point of view yeah. on each team that we do. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much, James. It's been really good to chat and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. And guys, that's it for this episode. If you want to pick up some of the shirts we talked about, check the link in the description. But until next time, take care and all the best. Mm